Hello guys, welcome to the next lecture. This lecture is about authentication functions. In the previous lecture, we have seen what are the different authentication requirements and why they are necessary to prevent the data. Authentication requirements plays a very important role in providing security to the data over the network. And for those requirements, what are the different authentication functions should be implemented we will be seeing in this lecture what the authentication functions are message authentication is a procedure to verify that received messages come from the added source and have not been altered in the previous lecture where we saw the requirements for the authentication we saw that because of the masquerading because of the non-repudiation it may happen that whoever the sender is can deny that he or she has sent the data or because of masquerading there can be the modification of the data in between because of the replay attack there can be the message forging also with the data so the message authentication is very much needed and the message authentication itself gives a procedure to verify that whatever the messages has been received at the receiver's end they are being coming from the authenticated users only and they are not being altered in between their transit for this a digital signature is an authentication technique that also includes measures to counter repudiation by either source or destination. So digital signature is another enhanced step we can say, which then gives you the authentication technique, which helps to remove the non-repudiation type of the requirement which is necessary for both the sender or the receiver. Any message authentication or a digital signature mechanism can be viewed having fundamentally two levels, the lower layer function and the higher layer function. The lower layer function, at the lower level function, there must be some sort of the function that produces an authenticator. That is a value which will then suggest or which will then tell the other person that the person from which he or she is receiving the message is the authenticated person and the message which is being received at the receiver's end is the authenticate, authenticated message and therefore at the lower level we can say that the functions should be used which produces the authenticators which produces an authenticator which then helps to, main, to, to maintain or to uh, present your authenticity to the receiver. This lower level function is then used as a primitive in a higher level authentication protocol that enables a receiver to verify the authenticity of a message. Then at the lower levels at the lower level function which then is used for the higher level authentication protocols can be considered as the primitives in the higher level authentication protocols which then ensures the authenticity of the messages also the authenticity of the senders and this section is basically basically concerned with types of functions that may be used to produce an authenticator so let's see what these authentication functions are these authentication functions may be grouped into three broad classes and they are as follows the first one is the message encryption second is message authentication code which is MAC and third is hash function message encryption we all know is defined as the ciphertext of the entire message 
इट सर्व एज एन ऑथेंटिकेटर मैसेज ऑथेंटिकेशन कोड इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ पब्लिक फंक्शन ऑफ द मैसेज एंड अ सीक्रेट की that produces a fixed length value which then serves as the authenticator hash functions a public function that maps a message of any length into fixed length hash value which then serves as the authenticator we'll see each in brief we all know what the message encryption is encryption also provides the authentication if symmetric encryption is used then we all know that sender and receiver uses the same key for the encryption and decryption purpose sender and receiver only know what key they are using they know the content that cannot have been altered and if message has a suitable structure redundancy or a suitable checksum to detect any changes this is the diagrammatic representation of the message encryption in symmetric encryption wherein we can see that a message is being sent then it is encrypted by a key which is then computed as e in bracket k of m which is then received at the destination b and then decrypted with using the same key to recover the plain text back message encryption using public key if public key encryption is used encryption provides no confidence of the sender since anyone potentially knows public key however if sender signs message using their private key then encrypts with the recipient's public key this functionality of the public key encryption we all know and they both have the secrecy and the authentications again need to recognize corrupted messages that are the cost of two public keys used on the message that means here the one key is used for the encryption the other key is used for decryption so here we can see the figure figure itself depicts that a message is being encrypted using the sender's private key which is then again encrypted using the receiver's public key and then we can say that double encryption is used here for confidentiality authentication and the signature and when it is received at the receiver's end first it is being decrypted using receiver's private key and then it is decrypted using sender's public key that means two way encryption and two way decryption is being processed here just to ensure the confidentiality authenticity and the signature of the message which is transmitted over the network now what the message authentication code is it is generated by an algorithm that creates a small fixed size block we all know that the data can be sent over the network by block ciphers or by stream ciphers so here the message authentication algorithm creates small fixed size blocks depending on both message and the secret key and like encryption through which it need not to be reversible also it appends the signature to a message receiver performs same computation and message and checks it matches the message authentication code or not and then provides assurance that the message is on unaltered and comes from the authenticated sender this is just a simple diagrammatic representation where we can see a small fixed size block of data which is uh, here denoted as capital m generated from message and plus a secret key which then gives you a mac which is then appended with the message when it is being sent for the destination we will be seeing in detail what the mac is what the hash functions are in the next lectures now what the hash function is it condenses arbitrary message to fixed size 
which is equated as small h is equals to capital H in bracket m, which tells that capital H is the hash functionality which is being implemented on the plain text message m. Usually it assumes that hash function is public. Hash used to detect changes to messages. Want a cryptographic hash function? Obviously we want to have a cryptographic hash functions and it computationally infeasible to find data mapping to specific functions which is one way property and computationally infeasible to find two data the same functions which is considered as collision free property. This is a simplest cryptographic hash function we can see where a message of a fixed length or a message of a variable length m is then using a hash function value which is of the fixed size or we can say which is of the fixed length which is then appended with the message before its transmission so what are the hash function uses it uses for integrity check that is the message integrity check we can say that sending of the message uh, send hash of the message digest uh, message integrity always encrypted message authentication code send keyed hash of the message mac message optional encrypted it means it sends the keyed hash functions of the messages and the message which is being then using the hash functions are optionally encrypted digital signatures as i told you that digital signatures are generally used for checking of the non repetition type of the requirement of the authentication it encrypts hash with the private key that is the signing key and it verifies with the public key we will see how it is being verified at the receiver's end in detail when we will be seeing the hash functions in detail i just hope that you might have got the concept of what are the different authentication functions needed for verifying or for you know uh, overcoming all the requirements of the authentication thank you